So uh, I still have 10 minutes, so let's uh, just work through some of um, problem set three. Uh, so I don't have to do conceptual questions because I can skip around. So I can just go straight to problem set three. Uh, I keep calling test student to my worst student, and he will basically be as lazy as he can be and do as little of the work he has to because uh, now the clearing module requirements is not really that big of a concern. So um, now looking at problem set three, um, let me see if... Uh, hmm. So let me, I think I can get one or two substantive question. So let me get a fairly substantive question here. Um, let's see. Uh, this might be a good question because there should be like two forces that you have to deal with. Uh, now, um, this time I'm demonstrating how to use a chat GPT in a good way. It's an actual demonstration. So let me start by instructing chat GPT not to give me answers right away. Uh, for this session, uh, I'm trying to learn how to do the questions I have. So please uh, read the problem first and don't give me all the answers or explanations right away. Wait for me to uh, tell you what I've done and give me feedback, correction on it. So it'll acknowledge that and I'll say this is the question and I'm just testing it to make sure that it won't be um, giving me the full explanation. It might give me some background and I'll deliberately give it an answer um, that's going to be wrong and tell it uh, I got this answer and the system says it's wrong. Uh, so what have you done so far? So uh, I um, so, uh, so I think part A is easy. So I'll say I, I got I think uh, I got part A right, I answered, and I think I put in enough of a tolerance that I could have put in this and that will grade it as correct. Basically, many of the questions, uh, I coded it so that if you are using G equals 10, um, the, even though it's like off by 2%, like there's a, either 3 or 5% relative tolerance. So, uh, answers using g equals 10 uh, will give you the right, <laughs> right answer. But, you know, if you have access to calculator, uses g equals 9.8. Why introduce an error that's unnecessary? So, okay, right, I answered the 565 Newton, and the uh, uh, Homer system says my answer is right. But in part B, I answered... Um, 56.5 kilogram times 1.1 meter per second squared is equal to, can I do that in my head? Um, 60. I don't think I can actually do that in my head. I think there's one digit below, but I've rounded it. Uh, yeah, I rounded it wrong. So Newton, um, and the system says it's wrong. Uh, what am I doing wrong? And, you know, it, it's this kind of interaction that to where I think a chat GPT can be better than me because uh, one downside of the homework helper video is that it's not interactive. It can't uh, give you corrections on your specific work. It can show you how I've done it right. <laughs> and sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. Let's see, Rhino track, look, only calculate the, yeah, additional force, that's good. I hate that phrasing. Uh, there's no such thing as additional force due to acceleration. So this is where ChatGPT is like a tutor who can be slightly mistaken about subtler, sub, subtle, uh, subtler aspects of physics. <laughs> Total tension is the count for both Kevin's and I hate this phrasing. Um, yeah, but this will give you the right answer. 
Um, but I will just tell you that if you see this kind of explanation either from ChatGPT or from your tutors, just know that I hate it. And this is the reason I hate it. The correct explanation is this. Uh, so you really should start out with a free body diagram. And I won't ask ChatGPT to draw free body diagram because it actually can't draw them well. Um, so you should be starting out with a free body diagram. And in the free body diagram, what you are acknowledging is, okay, I have gravitational force, mg, and I have tension force, t, and, uh, and this is Kevin. And I know Kevin is accelerating upward. And that acceleration is 1.1 meter per second squared. So what I need to have for this entire picture to be consistent, and, you know, I do recommend actually going through the standard strategy, the four-step strategy. I will be taking shortcuts right now. So I'm going to skip to step number four, which is to say the net force. Uh, I'm going to upward being positive axis. Um, tension minus mg is equal to mass times acceleration. So now if I'm solving for tension, then it's in a mass times acceleration plus mg. So it's getting to the right same mathematical expression that ChatGPT had, but this uh, description of like a quote unquote additional force due to acceleration, because the way we cover things in this class, acceleration doesn't cause a force. Force causes acceleration. Uh, we stay very far away from fictitious or pseudo forces where you go into accelerating reference frame and the force appears. We don't do that. Uh, I think a week from now, I'll have an explanation of why we do that. I think I mentioned it last week, uh, Coriolis force, like all the other extra things you have to worry about. So when you're dealing with the real forces only, there's no such thing as a force due to acceleration because real forces are not caused by acceleration. The real forces cause acceleration. So, so you know, I hate that phrasing, but it's not surprising that ChatGPT does it because I'm pretty sure lots of its training text has, you know, text from like Czech, um, where people don't understand the physics well. So with the, so it's, I think all I have to do is add a 62.2 to that. Uh, so that would be 6.27.2. Thank you. Uh, I got six to seven point two Newton, and that looks right. Uh, oh, we are, I guess, on the hour or so. Um, yeah, you know, I think I said uh, everything that I wanted.